So now we're in Bouget uh, in France for a, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna call this wine. It's, I guess, a rosé. I'd probably put it in the resé category, but then I got thrown for a curveball because I found out that over half the grapes are white, which means it's also not exactly a co-ferment because they didn't co-ferment together, but it's red and white combined. We really got to get some like new naming conventions for these things because I'm just really not sure what category to put them in, but I like it. So we're breaking all the rules here um, with this wine that's called Celine. So it is a combination of, like I said, half white, half red. Um, so that is, I think, 50% Chardonnay and then, oh no, 40% Chardonnay, 40% Gamay, 20% Mondeuse. So the color is definitely coming from the reds. Um, and as we'll see later, like the body and why it drinks more like a rosé is coming from that Chardonnay in there. And also, I don't know exactly how extracted the Gamay or the Mondeuse was. I'm assuming that the Chardonnay was direct for us, but without that actual information, that's just kind of my guess having tried it before. Um, so yeah, so this has got like this very dark rosé color, um, like rhubarb -y, maybe I would say, on uh, the way that it looks. It also might smell like rhubarb too. Let's just jump into that. So, hmm, very berryful. So initially I'm getting like, cranberries up here. And then if I go down more like raspberries, not so much blackberries. Oh, <laughs> that could have been bad. Um, this is why I'm not actually a psalm and why I just make videos because I'm very clumsy. Uh, like I've already broken way too many wine glasses to count, but back to the smell. So I'm really mainly getting fruit. Um, and I, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just noting that because in most of the videos, I'll also say, you know, it's, er it's herbal or it has this or that. And like, honestly, this wine doesn't have a lot beyond that. And that's totally okay. This is a fun, fresh, gluggable, your glue, glue, resé, co-ferment, whatever we're going to call it. We're not really sure. She, she, uh, she refuses, um, she refuses labels. So let's try her. That is lovely. So pretty much everything I just said was there, although I would say it's leading more with like raspberry. I would also say there's maybe a little bit of blackberry there, maybe a little bit of plum as well coming up on the end. Um, there was actually, let me just try again, see about the, yeah, maybe a little bit of like rhubarb and um, a little bit of that cranberry. Oh, you know what? It's, it's coming more at the finish. It's like got this like lovely acidic finish and the lighter notes are actually kind of like lingering there. Um, but yeah, this is just like one of those like chill and serve delicious. I think it's 11, yeah, 11.5% 11 alcohol. So nothing crazy. Just like chill her up, have her with any sort of like appetizers is what I would put this with. Like I would put it with hummus, I would not put it with like a cheese plate. It's not, she's too much of like a glue glue girl to really like stand up to anything serious. So I would put her with stuff that's not serious. Oh, you know what I'd put her with? This, like a hot dog. <laughs> it's kind of weird, but like, since it's got this weird resé thing going for it, I can totally see it with like mystery meat, which I feel like that's like doing her a disservice. She's lovely and she deserves better than a hot dog, but also sometimes you kind of know you just want a hot dog. So that's what I would put it with. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. I think when you try it, you'll know. Again, this is a, like an easy glue glue wine, so you don't need to drink anything with it. You can just have it when you're sitting around chilling with your friends and you'll love it. Oh, you know what? Serve it to your friends that are like, I don't really like rosé. Give them this wine. <laughs> because it'll be very confusing to them. All right, enjoy.